On this worksheet, we're going to do three examples of the acidic cleavage of an ether. In all three of these problems, I'm using HBr as the acid, but you could also use HI. So we'll make a note of that, either HBr or HI with heat for this reaction. Anytime you have an oxygen atom in the presence of a strong acid, and it literally does not matter what type of oxygen you're looking at, whether it's an ether, alcohol, whatever, the very first thing that always happens is the acid protonates the oxygen. So I'm going to begin by drawing the protonation of the oxygens, the oxygen in the ether, just like that. And once this step happens, this is kind of like converting an OH group into a good leaving group, getting it ready for an SN2 type reaction. The bromide ion is going to attack one of the carbon atoms attached to the O positive. It doesn't matter which carbon atom we attack, this is gonna be an SN2 reaction. I'm just gonna choose this carbon atom because it's on the same side of the molecule as the bromine, and we're gonna break that carbon oxygen bond. And again, this is just an SN2 reaction. So we're gonna make that molecule right there, plus also um, an alkyl halide. Pay attention to the number of carbon atoms. You don't wanna lose any carbon atoms. Uh, we have, remember that we have a lot of HBr here and anytime you have an oxygen atom in the presence of an acid, you should always protonate. The acid is always going to protonate. So that is going to give us this guy. Now this really looks like an SN2 reaction. And our bromide ion is going to attack the carbon attached to the oxygen um, and give us our second product of the reaction. So this right here is why in the first step, it doesn't matter which one you attack in the first step because they're both eventually going to get attacked. So these are the two products of the reaction right here. Example number two, anytime you have an oxygen in the presence of a strong acid, you wanna begin by protonating that oxygen. It doesn't matter what type of oxygen it is. I'm gonna say this over and over again in this video, so hopefully it becomes annoying to the point that you don't forget it. And now we're going to attack um, a carbon atom. So this, this one is a little bit different. This is a benzyl, a benzyl ether. It's got this phenyl group that's attached immediately to the oxygen. Um, because this is an SN2 reaction, you've got to keep in mind that SN2 reactions, they can attack these carbons here, but not this type of carbon. You're not allowed to touch any of the carbon atoms in a benzene ring yet. You haven't learned any of the reactions that they do, but um, they do not do any normal chemistry. So we're not going to get an attack over here to that spot. That's going to change the number of products that we have for this reaction. So we're going to get that guy right there. Um, we will make, remember this molecule's name is phenol, and then we're also going to make, I, I can't draw this in line structure, it's just going to be CH3Br, because so I can't, one carbon atom, I can't do that with a line structure because it drives me nuts. So there's our two products. And this does not react any further, again, because you can't attack that carbon with a bromine. And here is one final example. Um, anytime you have an oxygen atom in the presence of a strong acid, first thing that you need to do is protonate that oxygen. So that's gonna give us this guy right here. And then we're going to attack one of those carbon atoms with the bromine. You can attack either one of the carbon atoms. I'm gonna choose the one that's close and break that carbon oxygen bond. So this means that we are actually opening up this ring. And whenever we're opening up a ring, we've gotta be really, really careful to not screw up the number of carbon atoms. We've got three, four carbon atoms, one, two, three, four. Make sure we've got all of them accounted for. We. We still have a lot of extra HBr, and remember, anytime you have an oxygen in the presence of an acid, the first thing you should do is protonate the oxygen. So protonate that oxygen one more time, and that's going to give us this guy. Let's make sure I didn't lose any carbon atoms. And it is going to react with 
bromide ion, attack carbon number one, and give us this product right here. Make sure I have all of my carbon atoms. This is not the best looking. I'm gonna put more of an angle on that bromine so that there isn't any confusion about carbon number one. There is the one product this particular one makes, just the one product.